Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for Water Matters Month. My name is Yasmin Laik. I'm a program project coordinator for Broward County and I'm joined by my friend from Broward County's Natural Resource Division, Katherine Lee Hank. Hi. This week is Water Matters Kids Corner and we are going to be talking with you about the many ways you can all contribute to saving the water and the environment. If you have any questions, please jot them down and you can comment them below. We will post new videos every day at 10 a.m. this week. Please tune in every day for a chance to win a free admission ticket to the Museum of Discovery and Science. To enter this drawing, please fill out the survey linked below. More instructions can be found in the description of this video. If you need help, please ask your parents or guardian for assistance. Hello everyone, today we are going to be learning about the water cycle. So what is the water cycle? I've heard the term water cycle. I'm sure some of you have heard about it. So let's really dive deep and learn about what the water cycle is. So the water cycle is a process by which water circulates between the Earth's oceans, atmosphere, and land. This involves precipitation such as rain and snow. Um, this rain and snow goes through drainage in streams and rivers, um, goes through runoff, and then it returns to the atmosphere by evaporation and transpiration. So these are some big words that we will go over later on in the presentation. Have you ever wondered about water? Hmm. How does it get in a cloud? Is rain new water? Have you ever wondered about what happens to water when a puddle dries? Does it disappear? Has it gone forever? Water is so weird. Take this glass of water for example. This is the same water that existed on Earth billions of years ago. Dinosaurs drank this water, saber-toothed tigers drank this water, sharks, fish and whales swam in this water. Water doesn't really disappear forever or magically appear as new water. Water is continuously recycled over and over again from the earth to the atmosphere and back again. This is called the water cycle. Let's create a mini water cycle and see how it works. We'll do this by making a terrarium. By sealing the terrarium, it creates a closed system where water and air cannot escape. The sun will drive the water cycle and you'll find we can watch our mini earth recycle its water over and over. Let's begin. To do this, you'll need a large glass with a lid, alternatively, a large soft drink bottle, a small plant, potting mix, layers of gravel, sand, pebbles, water, and some gloves. Remember, safety first. Ask an adult to help. Now, in the jar, add a layer of pebbles, gravel, and sand, then potting mix. Plant your small plant and add enough water to moisten the soil but not so much as to flood the container. Close the lid. Place the terrarium beside a window with some sun, but not too much or you'll bake the plant. What do you think will happen in our mini earth? Will water disappear? Does the plant play a role in the terrarium? What's your prediction? When we add water, watch and observe changes that tell you your water cycle is working. In nature, some rain doesn't soak into the ground, but flows into creeks, rivers, and oceans. This is called runoff. When rain soaks into the earth, this is called infiltration. Some rain seeps even deeper into the soil and rock. This is called percolation. Plants soak up water through their roots and release water vapor out through their leaves. This is called transpiration. In fact, you transpire too when you sweat or breathe. And so does your dog. Crazy. What's really happening here? Let's take a closer look. Water droplets are made up of squillions of water molecules. When the sunlight warms the terrarium, it heats the water inside. And the molecules don't like to be close together when they're warm. So they move apart and change from liquid to gas and rise into the atmosphere as water vapor. This is called evaporation and transpiration when it comes from the leaves. The sealed terrarium prevents the rising water vapor from escaping. Without sunlight, the temperature starts to cool and the water molecules start to stick together turning back into tiny water droplets or liquid. This is called condensation. In nature, this is how a cloud is made. In our terrarium, we can see condensation as water droplets sticking to the lid and the sides. When they form heavier drops, they'll roll down the sides of the jar or fall from the lid as rain. This is called precipitation. In nature, precipitation can be rain, hail or snow. And so the cycle continues. Water is recycled round and round, never leaving the jar. 
Like our jar, Earth recycles water continuously from the atmosphere and back every day. At Sydney Water, we use and manage the water cycle to make sure we have a safe and reliable water supply. Did you see the changes as the terrarium warmed and cooled? Why or why not? If you didn't see condensation or precipitation or your plants look wilted or dry, add more water to your terrarium. If there's too much water, open the lid and let some of the water vapour out. Want to investigate some more? What would happen if your terrarium didn't have sunlight? Would you get the same results? No water molecules were harmed in the making of this video. They've been doing this for billions of years. There's a lot to learn about water, so visit sydneywater.com. So now we have a little game, our water cycle game. Let's see uh, how closely you guys were listening and um, see if you guys can define those terms. So here is a picture of what. Go ahead, yell it out, write it down. What do you think this is a picture of? If you said condensation, then you are right. This is condensation. Okay, what do you guys think this is a picture of? If you said sublimation, you are right. This is sublimation. Okay, we see some snow falling from the sky. What do you guys think this is? If you said precipitation, you're correct. Okay, water on the leaves. Hmm, what do you guys think this is? Transpiration, that is what this is. If you said that, you are correct. Okay, we have water on the road. Hmm, what do you guys think this one is? Jot it down. Runoff, if you said runoff, you're correct. This is runoff. And this one, rain, oh, the answer is on the screen. It's precipitation. Okay, water that is going down into the roots, into the dirt. It's called infiltration. Guys, um, well, so we watched the video about how the terrarium was made and we learned about some new terms. So now we are going to do this experiment together. Um, this is something that you could definitely do at home and you could find all of the materials in your yard or at the beach, wherever you have accessibility to outside. Um, you can find any of these things. So let's go over some of the materials that we have. We have a mason jar. Uh, it doesn't have to be a mason jar. It just needs to be something that has a lid that can close securely and tightly. We have some water. You're definitely going to need a little bit of water. And then some things that we found outside. So we have some dirt that we just dug up from outside. Uh, we went to the beach and we got a little bit of sand. Um, we found some mulch outside, so we got some of that, some rocks, and then we also got some plants. So I got some succulents. This is typically better done if you have some leafy plants. So uh, succulents typically hold more water and we would want a plant that um, transpires. So we went over that term in the video earlier. So try to look for something that's more leafy. And then just for fun, some decorations. When I was at the beach, I got some seashells just to make our terrarium a little bit prettier. Okay, so now we're going to assemble our terrarium. What you will do is open up your mason jar. Make sure you put the lid somewhere that you'll remember. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna put your gravel or rocks in the jar. So this is going to be a good base um, and this is kind of typical what you would see um, out in nature, rocks on the bottom, good amount of gravel or rock, okay and then after the gravel or rock you're going to put your sand. So you can see right now how this is making different layers. You can see the sand, the gravel. After your gravel, you're going to put your soil or dirt.
as you can see, we're making a little bit of a mess. So make sure when you do this, you talk to your parents and you tell them, hey, I'm gonna be doing a little experiment. If you need help, make sure you ask them. Um, I got quite a bit of dirt, so I don't really need all of it, but we're gonna do that. So we got our dirt layer, we got our sand layer, and we got our gravel layer there. Okay, we are going to plant our plants. Now, just gonna put them in. Make sure you get them a little hole in the dirt. There we go. I like this one, so we're just gonna plant this one for right now. And then you can get some mulch and put it around the plant. So the mulch helps absorb some water. Put some mulch in there. There we go. I think this is looking good. What do you guys think? All right, so now we have all of our layers. We have our mulch, we have our plants, some soil, our sand, and then we have our rocks at the bottom. Now, what we are going to do, let's make this a little bit cleaner. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to add some water. So you just wanna add a little bit, not too much, because if you put too much, it's going to flood the system. You just wanna put a little that it will be enough for it to circulate. So I will probably do maybe five or six squirts. Okay, so we got our water in there. You wanna just make sure that the soil gets a little moistened. Okay, I'm adding a five or six more squirts. So in total, we'll put about 12 squirts. Perfect. So now that we have our jar, our terrarium um, finished, we're going to close the lid. So this part is important. You have to make sure that you close the lid tightly. So now that you have your lid closed, you're gonna take this, find a place in your house, um, somewhere that's a little sunny, not too sunny that gets sun all day, just that has some partial sun. You'll put it by a window, a window would be great. And then observe it for the next couple of days. Try to answer those questions that we saw in the video. Um, what do you think would happen if you would add more water? What happens if you have less water? Um, and if you see in the next couple of days that your water is not um, condensating here, then you could definitely take some more water, add a couple of more squirts. It depends on your jar also. If you have a bigger jar, you're gonna need more water. If you have a smaller jar, you're gonna need less. So here's our terrarium. Go ahead, find a nice spot, put that on the window, and then just wait and observe and see what happens. You're gonna see all the different aspects of the water cycle. So I guess, I hope you guys enjoyed making your terrarium and now you have this beautiful little ecosystem, your beautiful little water cycle in your house. All right, I hope you guys had a great time. Bye. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you have any questions, please comment them below. Also, make sure to check out the survey below for a chance to win some amazing prizes. There'll be one question from every video this week. You have until March 31st, 2020 at 4.30 p.m. to submit your answers. Winners will be selected and your teachers will be notified on April 4th. Only Broward County School students are eligible for prizes. Happy Water Matters Month!